Hey, Trader, as well, British pound last night, uh, pound US hit 37-year lows, so a, a level not since is not at 95, uh, even lower than the, the dip we saw at the start of the pandemic before briefly uh, a rallying on a bit of US dollar weakness. Um, Britain's got a uh, slowing economy, energy concerns. Uh, it's been a real brutal few months for the bulls, the pound bulls. Um, GBP USD has been down seven of the last eight months, but I've come across uh, a couple of interesting fundamentals and, and technical indicators to, to maybe hopefully give the, uh, the pound bulls some hope. Um, first up, the, the fundamentals. Now, Liz Truss has just been elected leader of the Conservatives, meaning we've got a new prime minister, the UK, uh, promising massive stimulus to, to cap energy prices, meaning technically really you think inflation's peaked because um, Energy was as a massive part of that rise in inflation in the UK. If if that's capped, uh, some economists think that could knock six six percent basically off the off the peak inflation that was being forecast. Um, you'd also think that will reduce the scope and size of of the forecasted recession later in this year for next year. So both of those things are obviously um, big headwinds for for the British pound. Um, yesterday as well, we had Governor Bailey of the Bank of England speaking in front of a few lawmakers. Um, He's defended the, the Bank of England's rate hikes, citing uh, inflation as a major concern. They did talk about the, uh, the exchange rate with the US dollar and the concerns that some, uh, some of the lawmakers have with that. Uh, there was also a meeting next week at the Bank of England where uh, it's expected they're going to raise 50 basis points. That's what the analysts think. Um, having a look at the bond market, though, which I'll just bring up now, I find the bond traders are, are probably more accurate in their predictions than uh, the analysts. So let's have a look at that now. Berg terminal here. This is the uh, the implied rate at the uh, next Bank of England meetings, and we're looking at the one next week, it's the fifteenth of the ninth. Um, the implied rate sixty three point two. So that's what the bond market is pricing itself for. Um, sixty three is pretty much halfway between fifty and seventy five. It's actually slightly to the seventy five side. So even though the analysts are predicting a fifty. Um, the bond market is slightly skewed to the 75. So um, you've also got the Bank of England. You think that they might get in now while they've got a chance to, to supersize their rates before financial uh, conditions deteriorate any further. They also might feel a bit emboldened by, um, by the stimulus being announced that they can uh, go a bit harder right now without uh, damaging the economy too much. So um, don't rule out a 75, but... Um, if we do get a 75, you should see a pretty good little rally in the pound, I would think. Um, looking at the technicals on a chart, just looking at one of my favourite indicators, the RSI, especially in a longer time frame, it's it's for picking long-term uh, bottoms and tops. Once you get out into that extreme range, the overbought, oversold, it's pretty good at seeing where they are. So if we look at a monthly chart here, we can see, um, if I go back a bit, you can see the low at 985, just how how uh, weak the pound is at the moment. Um, only a couple of times before on a monthly chart have we got to this extreme oversold level. So that's back 2016 during Brexit. This big one here was the GFC. Um, not It doesn't always straight away turn around, but every big turnaround um, certainly does happen once it's gone to that extreme down there. So we can see that at the moment, we've just gone through that for the first time in, in six years as well. Um, Looking on a weekly chart, you'll see something similar that we've punched through it a couple of times and there's been little, real uh, oversold bear market rallies, I guess. There's one there, it was about 200 pips. Uh, this one was about 200 pips as well. So we're back in that same area where we've seen um, temporary turnarounds anyway. Um, one other interesting fact as well is the seasonality. Now, seasonality is something... Um, a lot of the professional traders will look at it's it's ne nothing's ever a definite but it's any kind of thing you get on your side the more things the better so um if we're looking at this website here this is the seasonality of the pound versus the us dollar um by month um this is for the last 10 years so you can see if i just go today's date eighth and we go out to that peak there which is the 18th 19th of september um, this is one of the most seasonally strong couple of weeks of the year. If if you have a look, there's not many where you see such a, a steep rise normally. Um, now, over the last 10 years, seven out of that 10, we've seen a gain during this first two weeks of September. Um, and the average profit 
for that gains about 1.45%, which would be about, I guess, about 160, 170 pips from here. Um, very interesting. A few things have lined up. Obviously, nothing's ever a definite in Forex, but um, the more things you can get up on your side, uh, the better, obviously, for your trade decisions. So um, hopefully that's been interesting. Have a look yourself. Season Axe, it's great websites um, for the seasonal stuff and have a look at the charts as well that RSI. It's, I find it's um, been really good for my trading over the years.